Last time we made an encoder that worked pretty well for about 100 items. But the problem we ran into is that when we tried to scale up this approach to tackle 300, 400, 1000 items, the codes created by the machine for the items were only a very small percentage of all possible codes of that size. For example, the 16-bit encoder with this approach can handle over 300 items, but uses less than 1% of all possible 16-bit codes. Today we're looking at these four encoders, and each one solves that low code usage problem in a slightly different way. A lot of you even suggested some of these approaches. We're also going to look at some encoders today that aren't binary, but output hex values instead. We're going to start with this one. I think it's the best approach. The idea here is that we take our 7-bit encoder that was a pretty solid encoder and just repeat it. Here we have eight copies of the 7-bit encoder, and each one would encode a different set of items, 115 per module so this whole machine could do eight times that or 920 items the output is three bits that mark which of the eight encoders the output is coming from and then the seven bits of output from that encoder as an example i set up one of the encoders to output a code for carrots so if we send off our minecart there we go What's going on here is that this subencoder is outputting 1001110 as the code for carrots, and these bottom three bits here, 110, indicate which of the eight subencoders was producing that code. I think this one's the best because it's still 90% code usage. It's half the size of another 10-bit encoder we'll look at back there. It's also the most easily expandable out of these four. So if you wanted to encode more than 920 items with this same approach, you could add a fourth line down here, and then you could address not eight, but 16 subencoders. The reset is exactly the same as all the previous encoders. We just send the minecart back over, and when it passes over this one, it'll drop the carrots it took back into it. Another advantage to this encoder the output bits all turn on within half a second of each other. For contrast, here's another way to solve the low code space percentage problem. So this is a 10-bit encoder, uses every 10-bit code, so it's getting 100% of the code space used up. We send off our minecart, and it'll produce actually the same code, so I set this up to also be 110 and then the same 7-bit code for carrots but you can see it took like five seconds for these all to turn on. You remember the reason we had this code space percentage problem was that we couldn't use every code without exceeding the 54 item capacity of a chest. One way you can solve it is just by wiring 10 chests together. So this looks like it's 10 item filters, but it's also actually kind of just one. The outputs of all 10 of these filter chests are wired together. So this actually only produces one of the bits of the machine. To use every 10-bit code, our item filters need a capacity of 512. If you have 10 double chests, that gives you 540 items. As you can see though, this one is way longer and slower than this one. Part of the reason for that actually kind of has to do with information theory. Here, if you were to change which chests had carrots in them, no matter how you change it, it would cause a change in the final code. With this encoder, on the other hand, if we were to move the carrots from this chest into this one, the final code for carrots wouldn't change because this whole section is wired together. By the way, I've laid these out in the shape I thought was easiest to demonstrate them with. If you were using these practically, you would take some time to make the wiring a lot more compact than it is here. So if you need to encode around a thousand items, I think this setup right here is the best one. However, if you're only encoding about 300 items, this encoder is pretty solid. This is our first example of a hex encoder. So the approach is similar to there where we wired together multiple item filters, but here we're not losing any information like we were there where you could swap an item into a different filter and it didn't change the final code. So here, 
the position of the item within this mega filter will affect the code, whether it's in here, 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 and so on, because we're using the signal strength. If I send off a carrot, the code for carrot on this machine is 306. We have three mega filters, each one with six double chests in it, which means we have a three digit base seven code as the final output. So even though we are using the hex signal strength of the redstone dust here, each of these lines will never output more than a signal strength of six. And there's a cool math identity actually where if you're using the signal strength and you have three stalls, the total amount of items per filter you'll need is actually the base squared. So here we have three base seven digits. It requires 49, seven squared, items per filter. Here I've done the same setup. So we have three stalls, each one outputting a signal strength, not from zero to six, but from zero to nine. Here we'd have three base 10 digits, which is kind of cool because the output is just a three digit decimal number. But it gets super messy because now our filters need a capacity of 100 items instead of 49. So if you have two chests per filter, you have a capacity of 108 items, which is enough to get the job done. For this monster here, we have these signal strength stalls of 10 filters each, each filter consisting of two double chests. And just like before, you get a base 10 code. But you would read this here as 729. This is future video editing, Chris. To be super clear, I think this last encoder I showed you is horrible and impractical. I just wanted to demonstrate that you could mix and match the hexish and the multi chest per filter approaches if you wanted to. Over 90% of people building a bulk storage that need to encode hundreds of items would be best served by the first type of encoder that I showed you. Now, past Chris can say goodbye. That's all I got for you this time. Thanks for watching.